It's a great day to worship the Lord this morning, amen? My name is Captain Kama Lyle, and I will be leading us in worship this morning. Will you please pray with me? Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for how much you love us. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and how we can be in relationship with you through him. We thank you for his mercy and his grace. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit and how we can receive comfort and counsel and guidance. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and for your love. We thank you for freedom, Lord. Even now, as we pray, God, just the freedom to worship you. And so, Lord, we pray right now that you will just be with us in this time and that you will bless us, that we will hear something new from you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, come and fill this place with your presence. Embolden us to spread the fire of your spirit. This day, may we devote ourselves to teaching and fellowship. May we break bread together. And let us pray as Augustine. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. May we never cease to be amazed at your works, and may we always remember that you are with us. Amen. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come fly.
I hope that you are safe and that you are healthy and that you are doing well. I hope that you are resisting the temptation to check the news every hour for the latest updates on COVID-19. While things seem to be getting better, there are still some uncertainties. Maybe for some, there's still some hesitation to go into public places like the grocery store or even public parks that are now beginning to open up. There's still some hesitation there, even though things seem to be getting better. With even uh, what's going on right now and, and all of the uncertainties that are happening, we know that God is still on his throne, amen? And should things worsen, he will prepare for us and he will provide for us a way in every moment and in every situation. We cannot let our fears or our worries or our anxiousness take root in our minds. So thinking about the word fear and, and COVID-19, the coronavirus, I went on to Google and did a Google search. And I searched, I searched the two words fear and COVID-19. And I found a picture. And the picture that I found was this. And I hope you can see it. Try to hold it up. I'm going to put it in front of my face, but I'll talk loud so you can see it. It says, the virus of fear. Panic virus. But you also see there beside it, COVID-19, the coronavirus. So the panic virus, the fear virus. When we let panic creep into our lives and we lose sight of who is in control, our bodies begin to be affected by this panic virus, by this fear virus. The virus of fear is worse than the coronavirus. Sounds crazy, especially with the numbers that keep increasing. The virus of fear is worse than the coronavirus. The virus of fear can cause all kinds of disease. The coronavirus only causes a flu-like disease. Fear will weaken our immune systems. It will hurt our spiritual growth, and it will certainly steal our joy, all of our joy. Fear will do this all without the coronavirus even touching us. We need to be in connecting with the Lord daily so that when all of this is over, when they found a cure, our faith will be stronger and our fears will be weaker. I hope that you believe that and I hope that, that that's um, a challenge that you're willing to, to take on, to connect with the Lord daily and remember his promise. Proverbs 17, 22 says, fear weakens your immune system, but on the other hand, a cheerful heart is a good medicine. A cheerful heart is a good medicine. Psalm 23 is our scripture for today. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. My hope is that you'll let this psalm help you have a cheerful heart today and in these times of unknown and uncertainty. My hope is that you'll let this psalm help you to have a cheerful heart in the unknown times that we're living in right now. That you will remember that you are not alone that you are not unknown, 
and that the Lord is with you. Now, King David, the author of this psalm, needed God. He knew he wasn't alone and that he did not have to be fearful of the future. He was guided by the caring hand of his shepherd, the Lord. The scripture I just read this morning, Psalm 23. God did all sorts of things for David. We read that. And we know that he does this for us too. The first thing that we read was that he made David lie down in green pastures. Now sheep, by nature, are fearful creatures. As they move into a new gazing area, they're con concerned with the potential predators there. Before the shepherd ever moves his sheep to, to a new area, he goes before them, filling in any holes where they might twist an ankle, smoothing out dangerous places, and setting guards to ward off any wolves. We think about that, and we also can think about us and our relationship with God. God has done this for us, and he continues to do this for us. Before we wake up, he prepares our pasture. He wants us to stay close to him and in this pasture and not wander off or away. So easy for us to do, especially in, in these times of unknown. For many of us, this means staying six feet away from other people so that we don't become infected and then agents of infection. For our nurses and healthcare workers, it means venturing out to the care for sick people, spending time in what verse 4 calls the darkest valley. Now, the critical piece for every promise in this psalm is the fourth word in this sentence, the Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. Let the Lord be your shepherd today. Listen for his voice while also, doing, while also doing your best to follow the directives, directives of the government. Don't get sucked in. Don't let your mind get saturated with the news, which can make us fearful and even sad and angry. But instead, let's listen for his voice. He will remind us that we are not in isolation and that he is near. Now next we see that God leads David to quiet waters. Verse 2 says, he leads me beside quiet waters. A shepherd knows that a wildly rushing stream is dangerous for sheep. They can get caught in, it, it can, they can get caught in its current and swept under by the weight of their wet fleece. So before letting his sheep near the kind of water the shepherds build, the shepherd builds a quiet place, a small dam or backwater where the sheep can drink in safety. God, too, has built a quieted backwater for you and for me. Do you know where it is? It might be in your home somewhere or near a tree in your yard. Or maybe it's right here, right now, in this very moment. God has built a quieted backwater for you and for me, a place of safety. God promises to always be with us. As the reality of our situation continues to soak in, as believers, we need to know how to respond to moments like these. We need to be people of faith. We see that David responded with faith. He trusted in God, and he did it seriously. He expressed faith that the Lord would never leave him or forsake him. Now I'm going to read Psalm 23 again out loud. And as I read it out loud, I want to encourage you to claim its truth and let it wash away the worry that you may be absorbing by watching any of the news today. Listen as I read Psalm 23.
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. As we continue to read, uh, as we just read, actually, in uh, Psalm 23, verse 4, was written for such a time as this. Even though I walk through the valley, even though I walk through the darkest valley, how dark is it? Is it dark but you can still see? Or is it so dark that you have lost complete sight? You have no control. How dark is that? Are we still able to fear no evil? Why should we choose faith instead of fear? That's easy. For God is with us. We are not, nor have we ever been, alone. In our situations, our circumstances, our desires, our needs, they are not unknown to God. He is all-knowing. He's everywhere. A shepherd never leaves his sheep during their darkest hour. And believe me, our Heavenly Father would never consider leaving us to fend for ourselves in a dark moment. He's not capable of desertion. Now, we just read Psalm 23. We know the author of the Psalm, King David. So he was known as a warrior king, but also a sweet psalmist of Israel. His sweet songs included Psalm 23, but also Psalm 139, the psalm most needed in times of loneliness and uncertainty. God, you know me, he says. You know everything I do and everywhere I go. You even know the thoughts inside my head. You know what I'm about to say. You know me better than I know myself. Can I ever get away from God? No. He is always with me. And not just with me, he's everywhere I am and ever could be. You are not, you are not only known me now, you have always known me. You were there while I was being made. So having reasoned all of this out, with the help of his harp, David comes to a conclusion. God, I want you to know me even better than you already do. I'm going to say, say that again. God, I want you to know me even better than you already do. Psalm 139, 23, and 24 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. See if there is any offensive way in me. Lead me in your everlasting way. Psalm 139, 23, and 24. As our isolation days drag on, may we remember that we are never alone, that we are never alone and never unknown. God knows us. He knows us so well. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Would you please pray with me? Jesus, you are the good shepherd, and I trust in you today. Help me to be aware of your presence in every moment. This pandemic feels like a dark valley for some. I know it does for me on, on certain days. Dark valley, Lord. But even with that, Lord, we claim the promise that the words of this psalm 
are a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, Lord. As you walk with us today, Lord, we want to be more than your lamb. We want to be your means to bring light to others who feel darkness creeping in. Lord, guide us, Holy Spirit, guide us to someone who can encourage, who we can encourage today. That might be by phone, internet, or six feet away. Guide us to someone who we can encourage today. We want to live this day for you as you live this day with us. Help us to find joy in this situation. Help us to call on you and your Holy Spirit for comfort and counsel in these days, Lord. Lord, we pray for cheerful hearts for all of us in these unknown times, Lord, a cheerful heart. is good medicine for our souls, Lord. So Lord, we thank you so much for your word, for your promises, Lord, for your truth, for your provision, and your Holy Spirit, Lord. Be with us all, Lord. We love you so much, and it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. And now receive the benediction this morning. John 14, 15 to 17. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. Amen. May God bless you today.